an adventure that will bring you face to face with danger and death. Meet Sean Weatherly, a beautiful girl with no diving experience. She will face an intense training program to prepare for a chance of a lifetime. Tonight, her amazing real life experiences will begin, taking her from the frozen waters of the South Pole to treasure in the Caribbean. An adventure that will bring her face to face with legendary creatures of the deep and shark infested waters. Like dealing with, with flying razor blades. Her guide will be Al Giddings, the world famous underwater explorer. Another member of the team is Toto, the robot. He helps Sean face the terrors below, which sometimes overwhelm her courage. All the excitement begins on the incredible journey called Ocean Quest. Well, what not a true adventure. All underwater sequences are actual dives which occurred in the place and manner described. All scenes of marine life were photographed exactly as they occurred. For purposes of dramatic clarity, some scenes were recreated and the order of events rearranged. In 1984, an extraordinary quest began by legendary explorer and filmmaker Al Giddings, one of the most honored undersea filmmakers of our time. His new commission to document the myths, monsters, and marvels of the deep. To film inner space as it had never been seen before. Not through his eyes, but yours. Thus began a search for a special person to join him. A woman without any previous diving experience. Her quest, the ultimate human adventure. His quest, a new vision of the Earth's most forbidden frontier. Their true story became Ocean Quest. announcement before. On April 27, 1984, it appeared in publications around the world. You may have responded. Thousands did. Only one would be chosen. Sean Weatherly, Los Angeles, California. Raised in South Carolina by her father, a retired Air Force pilot. Her mother died when Sean was nine. Despite the loss, Sean grew up a wholesome, beautiful, and goal-oriented young woman. And in 1980, was crowned Miss Universe. Her qualifications for Ocean Quest. A woman, under 25, in peak condition. Ocean knowledge, none. Snorkeling experience, none. Diving experience, an absolute novice. I'm not sure exactly why I did it, but when they said, you know, a year of your life for the adventure of your life, I thought, wow, that sounds like a good bargain. You know, all my life I've been filming whales and sea snakes and sharks and all kinds of wild critters, and 
and I've always felt there's been something missing. You know, all my life, people have told me you're going to get by on your looks. Don't worry about it. I couldn't photograph myself. I mean, all the emotions and those things that I felt and the blood surging and all of that, I couldn't convey. But I could by putting another human being in the scene. I wanted to prove to myself that I was more than a pretty face. It was absolutely imperative that whomever took the job had to go the distance, had to be with us for the entire year. I also wanted to make a commitment to something. I wanted to follow it through. I wanted to take Ocean Quest and, and survive it. My personal quest was to produce the most exciting ocean adventure ever recorded. In the end, I did have to ask myself, why am I doing it? To convey that through the emotions of a, of a, of a neophyte. Because it really was the adventure of a lifetime. The chance to test myself. Find out who the hell I was. The test begins. A rigorous 30-day trial. Failure and Sean will be replaced. For Sean, only one chance. The regimen, intensive, physical, mental, emotional. Hi, Daddy. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Okay, I'm back in my frame, holding my position. Sean must learn to live with a camera relentlessly trained on her for one year. Sorry, let me just get my focus. Giddings' concept put to every imaginable test. Can a neophyte go the distance? One year, eight oceans, 90,000 miles. A novice female diving with the toughest guys in the business. Okay, you rested? Let's go. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. An enormous responsibility. Come on, give me the wave. Climb out, climb out. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing really good. You couldn't even sell snorkel yesterday. <laughs> huh, you ready? No. <laughs> Snorkeling test. Scuba test, pass. While Sean painstakingly practices for the most dangerous test, an ocean ascent from 100 feet without air tanks, if and when she is ready. There's one rule to really remember, regardless of depth or time, it's don't hold your breath. Mm -hmm. If you swam to the surface from 100 feet and held your breath, your lungs would expand four times their normal size, which right. is impossible. They tear and rupture before that, okay? The physiological reactions of the human body underwater must be burned in Sean's memory for one reason, survival. Shark cage. What, they keep sharks in? People. The lock's the most important part. Doesn't hold. The door doesn't hold. The kelp beds of California. Sean's first ocean dive. She must never forget the sea is a beguiling creature. Alive, wondrous, deadly. Demanding concentration to the absolute. Test passed. Now a certified diver. <laughs> What'd you think of that? Uh -huh. That's so beautiful. That's just the beginning for you. You're going to see some things that will really humble you. Life, Rich. Thought that might get your attention. You have just seen the most dangerous fish in the world. Now, Dr. John McCosker briefs Giddings on the first quest. 
great white sharks. What I want to do in these experiments is to imitate all the ways in which humans are being attacked. A robot TV camera, which can go where humans can, down to 400 feet, undergoes preliminary trials. <laughs> What's Toto? <laughs> well, it seems like it has its own personality, so I, I thought it should have a name like that dog that followed Dorothy around, except this time it's going to follow Sean around. Toto passes every test. And Sean believes she, too, is ready for her final test, the deep ocean ascent without air tanks. The idea is to put a line in the water with a weight on it down to 100 feet and Rich will jump in with you and take you to 100 feet and at 100 feet you want to take off your gear all your gear except the mask and fins okay right. the last breath off the regulator yeah. and hand over hand up the line imagine yeah. a 10-story skyscraper huh you're gonna take one breath and if you do it right that breath will sustain you for the whole 10 stories what's the most important thing you gotta remember Keep blowing air out as you go up. Yeah, not hold your breath. Why don't you want to hold your breath? You'll get an embolism. Okay. Right, exactly. So, don't... Hold your breath. Keep blowing out. Blow and go. Exactly. Blow and go. Giddings carefully lays out and checks the course. Suddenly, a complication. Giddings himself hit by disorientation. Shortness of breath. Damn. I feel really terrible. I mean, or something's going shaken. on. Do you know if they have any oxygen on board? I don't know. I'll go ask the skipper. Huh? I'll ask the skipper. Why don't you go to the See if they've got... You know, maybe a couple of bombs, huh? At this point, we're proceeding down the front side of the island, going west, heading towards the lee of the island, so if we do need you, it'll be easier for the helicopter. Sean, as yet, is unaware of Giddings' condition. Now I had a little problem, and he's, uh, and he's okay, he's okay. What are you doing? I'm all right, please. Okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. Sean, I'm all right. It's all right. It's over. It's no, okay. I'm not. What did you happen? I just got dizzy on the deck, and uh, and I think uh, looked like you had a little bubble. had a little little bubble in my bloodstream. And... Oh God! I'm gonna take him to decompression chamber. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? It's fast. It's fast, honey. It's fast. It's all right. It really is. I'm fine. Stay here. Stay here. I'm glad they had the oxygen. Oxygen is the quickest and best thing you can do. We're supposed to know how long he was down. Well, tell him not to panic. He's, uh, he's pretty okay. Right away. Right. Could you tell me whether he lost consciousness? No. Did he embolism like a stroke? Um, it's a, a little bubble that's come out of his lungs, and it gets up into his brain, and it traps itself into a very small blood vessel and cuts the supply of blood off, and that's sort of like a stroke. How do you feel? Okay. A little dizzy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is Prism returning. We feel we will not need an air uh, air back out of here. We're stable, and there's nothing else. Uh, I had us pretty worried last night. The next morning. Yeah, I sort of got my attention in for a while. Definite improvement. Diagnosis, a minor lung infection. I didn't know it's bleed. I just, you know, I was used to the cameras being around. I couldn't believe you were laying on the bed without oxygen, and I, it just really shocked me. And we were playing by the rules. A clue to, uh, you know, how easily it can happen, how vulnerable we are. 
imagine if you really broke the rules, you know, 100 miles offshore and, and five hours by helicopter uh, to the nearest chamber, uh, you'd, get, be it. you'd get pretty, uh, and get real exciting fast. There's nothing you could do. The final test will proceed as planned. So hold on, it'll take about four minutes or so, and Rich will be right on your tracks all the way up, huh? Okay. Sean's free ascent. The thing to do is is not hold your breath. We talked about that at length, okay? okay? So just nice, easy, hand over hand. Let's go, I'm ready. You're more relaxed than I am. Flow and go. Exhale. Okay? Go. The free ascent test simulates the worst emergency underwater. Empty tanks. Sean must prove that she can reach the surface from a depth of 100 feet on one breath of air. Every precaution is taken for her safety. A free ascent should never be attempted without strict supervision. She's really gutsy, you know what? The breathing gear is ditched. One last breath to ascend the height of a 10-story skyscraper. quest can begin and Sean's quest as well to measure her courage commitment and confront her deepest fears the adventure of ocean quest continues after these messages begins. California, 8,527 miles away. Ow! Ow! Yeah. Right. What's it doing? Is this the boat? This is the boat. How was the flight? It was a long one. Huh? 
You have any trouble finding it? I know. I found the taxi driver. And... Get out of the bag. This is the boat I'm staying on? This is the boat. Are you excited about this? Let me put this on the floor here. All right, get settled in. I'm going to finish with those cages and all. Nice that you're here. I'll see you a little later. Destination. A point 19 miles south of Harbor. Appropriately named Dangerous Reef. On board, five tons of shark bait. We've got to get the grinder for the tuna to keep it fresh and minute. We've got to do 25 pounds an hour, just continually grind it. See that stuff out and let it thaw? We'll just keep it grinding, mix with the blood. Never any The scientific quest led by Dr. John McCosker. We haven't gotten enough information. In previous trips with Giddings, we've been able to tag sharks, but we really want the big picture. Now, we know more about trout. We know more about goldfish than we do about sharks. A battery of experiments. Ultimate goal, learn why sharks attack man. To attract the animal, Rodney Fox, famed Australian shark expert, ladles a smelly juice into the ocean. Its prime ingredient, fresh blood. Hey, Al, what do you see? Nothing. There's no guarantee of success. Great whites can go weeks without feeding. I don't see anything now. Huh? Anybody? When hungry, the animal is ravenous. Rodney, he's sure timid. Yeah, he is. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, grab the line. Watch the line. They haul the 3,000-pound animal closer for slow-motion photography. Giddings in position. Close. in action, as few have seen. Eyes rotated back for protection. Three-inch triangular teeth, serrated like saw blades. jaws unhinged to spread four feet wide. First experiment, time the acceleration of attack. Never before measured. McCosker must hand spear a telemetric device into a living shark. Be ready, John, because we're going to go real quick, huh? Okay, go Position, the slippery dive platform. Okay, John, we're throwing more bait in. Watch that spear. Hey, watch the spear. 
Now, to entice the shark as close to Makaska as possible. Well, as soon as he gets on the bait, just, just, just keep it out in front of him so he doesn't take it, huh? You know, bring him right into John so John can stick him. Here he comes. Right there. Yeah, right there. with no harm to the shark. Experiment report. For the first time, the speed of a great white clocked. 3.2 miles per hour. Barely the pace of a man walking. Next, the human experiments. The adventure of Ocean Quest continues after these messages. are so timid. I mean, oh, it's a, man. If he wanted to get attacked by a shark, he couldn't do it any better. Experiment two. I'm surprised it hadn't hit it yet, even though it is a dummy. A human effigy. Easy on the bony parts. It doesn't pack as well. This, uh, this stuff really does have the equivalency of human flesh. Object document the force of a shark bite. We'll be able to hypothesize exactly what happens to a human floating at the surface. We can tell by the depth of penetration, and we can tell by the uh, breakage what the bone damage will be. Watch, watch the clock, watch it. How are you going to know what the bone damage will be? Oh, that's easy. Just examine the bones there. For Toto, the robot diving camera, an extraordinary first mission. Photograph an attack underwater in shark-infested waters. This time, the experiment on a surfboard, frequent target of great whites. Despite the sharks, the divers free jump into the cage with scant margin for error. Toto's pictures relayed to a video screen and tape recorded for scrutiny later.
his bike shut off? I don't know. The circles tighten. Suddenly, a headlong charge. I can stay behind him. Another charge. No collision. Toto makes his move. 40 pounds of wire and metal versus 3,000 pounds of shark. And great white intimidated. Here. The incident points to a provocative hypothesis. The shark, seemingly confused by aggressive behavior. Richard, he marks it. A theory Giddings has long held and notes for the future. Nothing in the cable. Everything's fine. One shark, nothing. The surfboard test continues. Two of the hands are doing the face posture. It's just perfect. Here he comes. He sees it. There's an animal right there. How long you? Only a nudge. If that was a real person, I'd be just jittering, vibrating. This part would be speaking right out of its chest. That shark would be really responding to different stimuli. Hey, this isn't working. Let's pull the cage out and get rid of the distraction. Hey, Rod, we're taking the cage out. It's confusing the shark. I agree. Good. Okay, get ready. We're taking you out. I think they'll take it if we're out of the way. Here he comes. I thought they were going to take Where's the action after? Uninterrupted eating, away from other sharks. John, the first piece we picked up had part of the rib cage and the skull. The skull's cracked in half. And uh, then the second piece was a leg bone, pelvis, and it's cracked in half as well. All the ribs are cracked right through. I'm amazed any of them survived it. Also, see if you can find any wetsuit material. There should be a floating wetsuit. He took it and swam a long way with it. Yeah. We found some remnants. Not much. Uh, what do you got, Paul? Yeah. Hey, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Be careful. Oh. This is the uh, cranium, which is in the... Uh, look at the teeth here. Look. Look at this. One, two, three... Experiment report, jaw force on human bones, devastating. Look at that angle. Now confirmed as 800 pounds per square inch. Experiment three, witness an attack. 
in the water. real interested in shooting as we have in the past the bite business where the animals come up and take the bait so i'll be using a high speed camera uh trying to get that moment where the shark comes up and opens its mouth and the eye rotates back and the teeth jut forward and, and john's really been studying sort of the I'd anatomy like to see that. that on film that'll be important to have you're not going to be able to keep careful record in your own mind in fact none of us can you can only do it by reviewing the films after we get out of the water a couple of other things i'd like to see i'd like to see when, in fact, the blood goes into the water, if, in fact, the shark starts to behave a little bit differently, just how quickly does it respond to the stink of the blood in the water? I'd like you to just keep your eyes open, get an idea. Once the thrill is over, immediately just start watching them. Get an idea of the various things they do. Just a little encouragement after all these, these things that have been said here. In 20 years I've been out here, we haven't actually lost anybody or had any very bad accidents. The idea is to put us in the water, we'll boat jump in, they'll pick the cage up and they'll haul it out and they'll lower it in, you know, uh, uh, out by the chain. Huh? Take it up a little. All right, push it out. As a safety precaution, Sean will not free jump into the cage. A neophyte might easily panic, miss the opening, a possibly fatal mistake. Instead, Sean enters the cage topside, which will be lowered into the water by winch and rope. Because of the limited air supply, the shark must be attracted before the dive. Yeah. Here it comes. Jump made hundreds of times. For Sean, this is the first time. Giddings has assured her she does not have to die. Hey, Brown, you swear? No, everything's fine. Jump in, okay? Let's go. Okay? Look, I'll drop down out of the way. Stop clear. You go, okay? Pull the cage closer. Just jump right in here. You have to pull the cage closer. Huh? Pull the cage closer. Yeah, it'll be closer. Okay, ready, Sean? Put your mouth in. Go. 
critical information about shark attack tactics and strike force. Speed, surprisingly slow. Attracted by shape and scent cues. A preference for surface attack from the rear. And the most fascinating, 
a shark's confused response to aggressive behavior, which encourages Giddings to consider the unthinkable. Get out of the cage with a great white. I don't think it's going to be that much of a problem. It only really is if you're bitten, Al. Uh, these are unpredictable animals. They're predictably unpredictable. We're down there. You get out of this cage, you're asking for it. There's no question in my mind. If they had a clue as to the advantage they have on the bottom, they'd come in and take you like that. But I don't think they do. And I think they're, they're real nervous. As uh, a human being and a friend of yours, I think you're making a big mistake. I'm just sure, John, that, that, that the animal won't take me. And if you're wrong? It's hard for you to understand, like, coming out here and working with sharks wait, wait, and diving wait, 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 every day. Wait, 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 Are you afraid of the diving? I mean, you feel you're not, you're not experienced enough? Yeah, that too. That has a lot to do with it. Do you have any second thoughts about this shoot or the whole 10-month commitment? The 10 months. I, if I had more experience, if I knew more what I was doing, if I could... It's your decision. If I had the experience you guys had if I was a professional like you are. If you're really unhappy, then I guess you have to leave. For Giddings, a daring concept, Ocean Quest, on the brink of failure. For Sean, her commitment and quest in jeopardy. Be loving and warm. And sharing my life.